everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about Workspace Cloud. Now, I only focused on one aspect of it, our Zen App and Zen Desktop aspect of it. But just to do a quick overview of what Workspace Cloud is, just think of it as the services that you typically run or the dependencies you typically run to, to get Zen App up and running, such as SQL Broker, Storefront, License Server, and PBS, MCS. These all run in the cloud. Um, <clears throat> what runs on the customer side, be it on-prem or off-prem, is just this thing that we call the Workspace Cloud Connector. This handles identification, authorization, and provisioning. For the purposes of today's video, I'm not gonna be showing off provisioning. I just wanna give you an idea of how all of this works. So we're gonna be installing the Workspace Cloud Connector in real time for you today. So let's jump into it. I'm doing this demo on Azure today, and on Azure, I have three virtual machines, a domain controller, a Zen app server, and a workstation. Now to set up a virtual machine on Azure, it's pretty simple. You just click new, you choose virtual machines, and I chose these from, from a gallery, or just think of it as a template. Uh, for my domain controller and my workstation, I just chose a Windows Server 2012 R2 instance, but for my Zen app server, I chose a Windows Server RDS host. So it's a template that's already got RDS installed, which saves me a few steps. Now I've already done this, and so I just wanna show you what each one of these VMs looks like. This is my domain controller. And on my domain controller, um, you can see that, <clears throat> there. I'm sorry, uh, you can see that nothing is installed here. So programs and features, there's nothing there. All I did was I used the template and then I promoted to, to a domain controller, which takes about a half an hour and a bunch of reboots. So I skipped that in this video. Uh, on the Zen App server, this is what a Zen App server, uh, or sorry, RDS server comes with Silver, Silverlight and System Center already installed. Only thing I did is I installed Skype afterwards because that's the program we're actually going to be sharing at the end of this video. And then finally, my workstation is just a workstation, uh, same thing, template, but I installed Citrix Receiver, which we'll be using at the end of the video to access Skype from this workstation. The, the next steps that I'm gonna do, I don't have to install on a domain controller, I'm choosing to install on a domain controller, uh, just because I'm keeping this simple. Um, but this is, the, this is the Workspace Cloud, so workspace.cloud.com, and you can see as on my account, I've already got one workspace stood up. Now this is because this is a second video I've shot. In your case, you'd probably have zero. So just ignore the fact that there's one. At the end of this video, this is gonna say two, two, and two. The first thing that we have to do is we need to create a connection between what's on-prem or off-prem, whatever the customer owns, and the Workspace Cloud. To do this, we need to add a domain. So ignore this domain, this one exists in your scenario. This is for my other demo, uh, but we're gonna add our domain. To do this, it, it wants me to download this Workspace Cloud connector which I have already done, and I've actually already placed it on my domain controller, like a good cooking show here. This is the uh, CWC connector, this is what would download. So we're gonna go ahead and install this. So the install takes about a minute, but I'm gonna speed this up so it only takes about 10 seconds for us. The only thing you're gonna see me do during this process is authenticate, which I just did there a second ago. The process installs, and after that, you just hit finish. There's only one difference you might see, is if you have multiple customers on CWC, you would actually choose which customer the install applies to. So now we're gonna get this out of the way <clears throat> and go back to the Workspace Cloud and just hit refresh on the domain list so we can see our new domain show up. Azure.local is now set up, and Azure.local is what my domain name is, and just uh, make sure that that's understood everyone understands that, just gonna show you that that's what this domain is, azure.local. So there within a few minutes, I now have a connector to Azure. A very cool thing with this is, this is there's no VPN here. This is all going over HTTPS. So this is very, very cool. Um, so with the cloud connector established, this thing's done, I'm actually done. The domain controller can be minimized. We're not gonna touch it anymore because we're gonna be managing everything from here. And just keep in mind, once again, we don't need to use a domain controller. It can be any our domain join machine on my network. So the next step is we need to get a Zen app server. So using the same, <clears throat> excuse me, if I can remember workspace cloud dash DC one share. Um, so this is a Zen app server. And now on this one, I'm gonna install my VDA. Now, if you saw my other demo where I did this, I actually skipped the VDA install because it takes 10 minutes to, to do this and it requires a reboot. But I'm probably just gonna fast forward through this thing. This is the exact same VDA that I would use 
for any ZenApp or Zen Desktop deployment period. This is not a special VDA for Workspace Cloud. This is the same one that I use for anything, uh, same, you know, 7.6 VDA that's out there. So I'm probably gonna fast forward through this process, but I'll stop at one point uh, to show you one of the uh, minor differences in the VDA setup. So this is the only step in the process that is different. Um, and it's not even different than the way you normally do it. It's just uh, the interesting thing here is we're going to point it at the uh, cloud connector. So WCDC1, test the connection. Uh, I'm not, I got to do Azure.local, test connection, and there she goes. So you see, I'm actually pointing it at the at servers. That's this is the name of my domain controller that I just that I just installed the cloud connector on. So I do that next. And then everything else after this is just standard. So we're just going to do an automatic next, next, next install. And of course, this reboot process is going to take <clears throat> some time. So probably about 10 minutes here. Um, I'm just going to uh, fast forward through all of this and the subsequential reboots. And we'll just skip right to it. And now it's done, so we're gonna hit finish and we're gonna reboot the server. All right, so the last thing we did was install the VDA. Uh, it is since installed and rebooted, and here you can see that it's all done. So I'm pretty much done at this point in time. And I would like to point out that uh, if I was actually doing provisioning, you would probably have that done within the provisioning process. But we're just doing things manually for this video. So this is done, and we're just going to get rid of the, of the Zen app uh, server for the, for the time being. Because for, for, the, for this point forward, we're going to be living inside of our workspace cloud. So this is where you really need to learn the, the new web UI and, and what's going on here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a new application. Um, to do this, this is a, a brand new UI. This is actually my first time seeing it. Um, this, this, uh, you, it's, you know, it's being that this is a cloud service, um, the guys in the background are constantly making updates to it. And so Synergy is a couple days away. And so they just made this uh, kind of last minute change for Synergy. Um, and it's, you know, getting ready to rock and roll. But I already went ahead and, and clicked on manage, uh, which brings up uh, the um, bring, brings up the uh, machine catalog here. So this uh, is should look really familiar to most people out there that have run uh, Zen app for a while. Um, and uh, it's because all we did was take uh, studio and uh, basically put it uh, in, in web form. So here we go with a delivery group and a machine group. Those are uh, machine delivery group I made for a previous demo. So we're going to create a new one for this demo. So create machine group. Next, we're going to do a Windows server. And we didn't do provisioning, so I kind of get to bypass that. And we're going to add that computer to our, our group. So add computer. The name of the computer, I believe, is xa01.azure.local. Check name. And it found it. Kind of cool thing there is that this is not, I mean, this is running off our cloud service, right? But it still saw the domain join machine, uh, all without a VPN. So it's a really kind of cool piece of um, technology that our guys built there. So we're going to hit next on that. We're going to give this thing a name. I'm going to call this Azure Zen app. And we're going to finish this up. Now, as you, as you would typically know in, in this process, we got to create a delivery group. So we're going to create a new delivery group. Hit next. We're going to add that machine. And we're going to hit next. And we're just going to do an application for this demo. And the application we want is going to be Skype. But this is the one thing that you'll notice different uh, in this demo is um, there's this radio button that says Workspace Cloud. Basically, we're going to handle user assignments on the Workspace Cloud. So we're going to allow that to go happen and hit next. So now it's going to scan that machine uh, for uh, the applications that are on it. Of course, the application we're looking for is Skype for Desktop, and there it is. So we're going to check Next on that. And we're going to give this a really fancy name like Skype and Finish. 
I'm all do done. For the purposes of, of this uh, demo, I'm done. Uh, in other demos, I'm sure you'll see out there, you'll see how to actually do true API integration between you and the cloud provider, so you could do automatic provisioning. But um, for the purposes of my demo, we're just gonna move on and we're gonna create uh, the next, the, the actual workspace. Now that we have something that we wanna give to this workspace, it's time for us to build that workspace. So let's create a new one. And you see that it's already found Skype in there. So uh, although we made those changes just a few seconds ago, it's already there. So we're gonna add that service to it. And we're gonna give this a workspace name and we're gonna call this my Azure demo. Azure demo. And we're gonna create that workspace. Now, this is a step by 10 to miss, so make sure you catch this one. We have to entitle it. We have to enable people to use it, so we got to add subscribers to it. So we're going to click on subscriber, and we're going to choose azure.local because this is the demo I've been giving you. We're just going to say all domain users can get it. So pretty similar in how I do most demos. And we're going to publish it. That's it. So that's the process it takes to build that workspace. So the next step is we're gonna to wanna to test this and to get there, I need to go to gunner.zendesktop.net. This is a cloud-based storefront that uh, it was set up as part of the Workspace uh, services, our Workspace Cloud. And the thing I'm just gonna point out is this is all cloud hosted, but again, I'm using my domain credentials, Azure and Gburger. And I'm just doing this to do a quick test to make sure it actually works. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna bring up a different workstation um, that other VM that I created, uh, if you remember in the beginning, I created a, a third VM. I created it for the purposes of testing this final connection. But I just wanted to make sure that Skype did actually show up before we go to this final phase. So we're going to exit out of that um, and we're going to go into my workstation. So this is a workstation that's sitting within the same dub subnet. So, you know, think of it like being on a LAN if you were testing this on on-prem. On um, so this is really where the rubber, rubber meets the road. I wanna make sure that this thing works properly. So we're gonna double click and we're gonna type in my address for the server. So we're gonna type in the gunner.zendesktop.net and hit next. So I'm pointing it at my storefront. It should take about a minute for it to discover that storefront. And we're just gonna say yes to this one and we're gonna hit finish. So there it is, it's connecting into the storefront for the first time and it's asking me to add my app. So we're gonna go over here, hit add, and we're going to find their Skype for desktops. So we're gonna click add to that. And there she comes, takes a couple seconds here for that to highlight. Oh, it's asking me to authenticate. Log in. And it's up and running, so we're gonna do a final test here by clicking it. Okay, and I've had this error before. All this error means is that it's still registering the background. Everything I've gone through is actually really quick. Uh, you've seen, you've actually watched me in real time, uh, make the machine catalog, make the delivery group. And as you know, with any Zen app service, it takes a little bit for all that stuff to register. So what I've found is if I just give this thing a minute um, and click it again, it's gonna go. So I'm probably just gonna click a, uh, cut ahead in the video. It's probably gonna be about a minute later. Um, and that it will work. So if you see that, I'm leaving the air purposely in the video because if you see it, I want you to understand uh, what's going on there. It's just the, the machines are still uh, registering in the background, which is very typical in this type of environment. So we're gonna let it go and I'm gonna click again. So I was, while I was waiting for that to go, I actually had a phone call, but uh, I jumped on a little bit later and I clicked on Skype and it did launch. However, I got a little bit confused in the process because uh, it showed up at the bottom as you see here in just a second. So there it is at the bottom. Uh, but that's it, uh, Skype launched uh, and you kind of saw everything in real time. You know, I sped a couple areas up just for the consistency of the video, but pretty much everything happened right in front of you. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, be sure to check out Workspace Cloud. Have a great one.